I've started it, so whenever All right. we're ready. We can start. Yep. Tony, you got anything opening to say? Any prayers or anything? Or? I don't know. Prayer from you, Tony. John said I'm supposed to. Now's the time. Father, Spirit, Mother Earth, Clay, we ask you to show us everything that we should have, not what we want, but what we need. Teach us how to find our path back. Teach us what is within us. And show us your love and your mercies and your kindness. And most of all, we thank you for these wonderful opportunities and these experiences and just being able to share with each other. You're always full of inspiring prayers, Tony. Mm. Mm. Um, I was going to name this presentation the Counterfeit Doctrine of Reincarnation, but that was when I started to lay it out. I'm not sure what it's going to end up at. <laughs> so it, uh, it seems to have grown, but it always seems that way. So I'd like to begin with um, some statements of, uh, that everybody rejects. Everybody knows better, and that's what well, the classic epistle of Peter to James where it states it will remain even for those who really seek the truth, always to wander in error with the esoteric knowledge of the teaching, original teaching, the way it was to become lost. Now, nobody in our modern society believes that. You go into any church and they'll, you know, that's not nonsense. And of course, the Gospel of Thomas states, Jesus said, He, let him who seeks continue seeking until he finds. When he finds, he will become troubled. When he becomes troubled, he will become astonished, and he will rule over the all. Now, who goes to church and is astonished at what they say? Who goes to school and is astonished by what they say? Who is astonished by anything in our culture that say, inconceivable, which is basically what it means to be astonished by this true reality. Which means that probably the epistle of Peter to James is correct, where it states that if you lose these esoteric teachings, that you'll totally lose your way. Because nobody's being astonished in our present day. And of course, Paul states that true meaning of the gospel would be re rejected as nonsense if he was to openly speak it. Now, who teaches today, preaches today in a church, that they'll, if he was to, to speak of the mysteries of the kingdom and the higher reality of the soul, that it would be rejected as nonsense? What religious dogma astonishes the hearers, east or west? I mean, the New Age has got it all down pat. They've got everything laid out. The churches have it laid out. We have academia who has that laid out. Nobody's being astonished. So either these people are wrong, or we are, we're disconnected from the truth. Gospel of Thomas, of course, one of my favorite sayings of all. But if you will not know yourselves, you dwell in poverty. And it's you who is that poverty. What's to know about oneself? You look in the mirror. What is it about self that uh, we don't know? This is what modern people would say. What modern oracle? And of course, the Delphic Oracle, which states, Heed these words, you who wish to probe the depths of nature. If you do not find within yourself that which you seek, neither will you find it outside. If you ignore the wonders of your own house, how do you expect to find other wonders? In you is hidden the treasure of treasures. Know thyself, and you will know the universe and the gods. This is so far out of kilter with what our modern culture is based upon. That's like an old monument, like the Sphinx or something, nobody really understands. Socrates, one of my favorite people. The unexamined life is not worth living. What could he mean, the unexamined life? What is the examined life? What knowledge must be acquired? 
to know thyself. What are they speaking of here? Something so far and far removed from what we have today that it's like it's coming from another planet. What knowledge must be observed with respect to self? There I am, body, whatever. Gospel Thomas, saying 84, perhaps gives us a clue. Jesus said, when you see your likeness, you rejoice. But when you see your images, which came into being before you, and which neither die nor become manifest, how much will you have to bear? Now, what's the likeness? What's the images? There's nothing in our present day culture that would explain this. Of course, we know from the website writing that your likeness is your true self. And the images are your unmanifest past life personalities that your soul lived. Now, the idea that um, these, these images can still exist and you can see them and communicate with them is so foreign from our modern dogma of the church even Eastern religions that, again, we're talking a foreign language here. Your unmanifest images, your past life personages, fail to achieve soul birth. What is soul birth? We don't know. That's a great void in our society. It's a great void in academia. It doesn't exist in Christianity. And when you understand the Eastern religions, it doesn't exist in that. What we don't fail to realize is these soul, these images of previous lives can continue to exist across the dimension of time. But since people don't understand that time is a dimension of mind that can be moved in, and these other past life personalities are in the process of forming your present life, even communicating with, and you can tap into these past life personalities and communicate with them. And these past life personalities, when you understand the soul-mind matrix, can influence you at present, positive and negative. Then what you have is a, is a reality totally foreign to what our culture is built upon, to what our present day religions are built upon. Paradoxically, both the Eastern and Western paradigms of thought on reality of the soul are equally right and equally wrong. Both are incomplete without the opposite. One says you're reincarnate. The other one says you only get one go, go around in life. Which one's correct? Both of them have fragments of truth. Both of them have a need, need of each other in order to make, uh, have the higher truth. We are a soul-generated image, and our soul has generated other images. Personally, I have never lived before. I have not reincarnated. I have never existed prior to conception in my mother's womb. But I inherited my, what I call my spiritual DNA from my soul. And that spiritual DNA was, is the basis of all the lives that my soul has lived throughout time. And I can, if I understand that knowledge which is no longer available today, I can tap into those other soul images. I can learn from those soul images, and I can also tap directly into the source of it all, which is my soul, or higher self. And if I overcome and if I become manifest or I achieve the next stage of birth, I can tap in the potential to tap into the Logos, the mind of God. This is all within you and this is what the Delphic Oracle is talking about. The words expressed by origin, every soul comes into this world strengthened by the victories or weakened by the defeats of its previous life. They're influencing us right now. All that our soul has lived as, they're forming our life at the present. Our thoughts are based upon what our soul has lived as, what it has accomplished in its past. And we are defining ourselves, and we're defining our future 
right now. What you do today will open the door or close the door for you in the future. Flawed doctrine of reincarnation. Let me quote the Bhagavad Gita. I guess that's how you pronounce it exactly. From what I see, it's in grave error. Now, whether this error was the error of the original authors, I don't believe so. I believe it was corrupted, just like every other religious doctrine known to man. But it states, as the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. That's the Gita 2.13. And also, as a person puts on new garments, giving up old ones, the soul similarly accepts new material bodies, giving up the old and not useless ones. Now, from the perspective of higher reality, this is a lie. And yet, all of Eastern mysticism, all of New Age, and everything else is all based upon this lie. How this lie got into the Gita, whether it was the counterfeit doctrine of the authors, I don't know. I'm not an expert on it. But it's a lie, and it can easily be proven to be a lie. And all of Eastern teachings is all based upon this mind, this, this lie, and it's causing them to have an obstacle to their own spiritual growth. Which means the Eastern religions are really no better than the Western religions. But again, we go back to that two paradigms of thought. One says you reincarnate, one says you get one go around. How about if both are right? And each image gets one go around and then must live for eternity with whatever it was and whatever it accomplished. That the soul evolves over the course of many lifetimes, generating new images into the world, and each one of those images inherit their spiritual DNA now that's a reality that neither religions are prepared to understand and yet both have this fragmentary truth that brings it all together. The concept of the soul actually incarnating into the body and jumping from body to body after passing through the cloud of forgetfulness, which is one of their favorite explanations, must be classified as Eastern milk preached by Billy Graham from the East who call themselves so yogis, gurus, and masters. After our last year's association with some people who are based on Eastern theology, almost anybody's a master. They just gotta hang out the shingle. I'm a master. Are they? I wouldn't call them a master. The pre nician church taught the doctrine of the pre-existent soul did not teach reincarnation, like what's taught in the East. And even the Greek understanding of reincarnation is suspect, but I have the feeling that that was just watered and milked down for the masses. I believe Socrates and Plato and the boys and, and uh, Pythagoras knew higher truth than what they would openly speak about. Also, I believe there's people in this true spiritual enlightened people in the East that know better, but because the general population can't comprehend higher reality of the soul, they can't speak openly either. The idea though that the Eastern explanation that you pass through the cloud of forgetfulness and you, you don't remember all your past lives is it's foolishness which is based, what's the, what the whole Eastern paradigm of thinking is based upon. It doesn't explain anything, and intellectuals will reject it just like they do the doctrine of reincarnation. But they, intellectuals also reject Christianity with their belief in the Jesus God. So the old religious dogma has met its end. And this is why you don't see the churches attracting the people that they used to in Church of England is just about having to lay off the priests. Mm -hmm. So the whole concept of reincarnation, the whole concept of when you get one go around basically has been proven to be wrong. Yet people still flock to these churches. 
Christians believe you only live one life. And while a soul-generated image is true, this image has been generated by the soul is not the true being of light. In other words, the person you are in this world is not your true self. Gospel of Thomas saying 84 is correct, that each soul-generated image is in a unique expression of the soul. I'm a unique expression of my soul. All the past lives that my soul has lived are the, were themselves unique expressions of the soul. That we're all part of the soul, just like the reality that all souls are also part of God, that each one is different. The image personality, which is what we are, is often portrayed as the ego self, false personality, lower self, organic self, but not the true person you are. Allison, you're only an image of your true self. Your true self isn't even female. Neither is a man. Your true self is a being of light, which you are an expression of. Same as everybody else here. The problem is, we are a three-dimensional image. Everybody understand this is a three-dimensional world. And our true self is a 12-dimensional being that holographically is replicated across many other dimensions. There's no way that this vast being that's our soul or true self, which has existed since the dawn of time, can manifest in a body in a three-dimensional consciousness. This is what the original teachings of the way Jesus associated with the man Jesus was about, expanding the consciousness of man in order to understand the higher reality of the soul, understand God. And without that expansion, there is no understanding. That's why the Gospel of Thomas says, unless you know yourself, you dwell in poverty. The original Gospel of Thomas conveys the path to bring about the expansion and deepening of self that permits us to become at one with our true self, our soul self. All those sayings in there must be experienced within yourself. It's not something that I can teach, or somebody else can teach, or you can write a commentary in a book. Because you must bring these sayings about within yourself, including the one that says, you can't be woman and enter the kingdom of heaven. It's number 114. But neither can you be a man and enter the kingdom of heaven. Holographically, Jesus used these same teachings to become at one with the indwelling logos, mind of God. So the difference between us and the historical man, Jesus, was he applied all this knowledge expanded the self, became the anointed, and became at one with the Logos. Logos means mind of God. The Gospels mention the outer darkness. What is the outer darkness? The parable of the prodigal son portrays this realm as the far country. What is the far country? And it states, those who have not yet put on the wedding garment of purity have yet have been portrayed as dwelling in the outer darkness of mind and being. The outer darkness is this three-dimensional world in which all of mankind dwells. And it's not until he brings about this development. Plato's Cave of Illusions portrays this world as shadow images that man ignorantly imagines to be real and whole. We hear the intellectuals in our culture say, only what we see is real. Only what we can define as being physically valid is real. Yet modern physics has proved this wrong, but they ignore it. Plato's case says it's shadow images. The outer darkness says that you dwell in a, a false world that is illusion. Shadow images portray 12-dimensional source reality projected into a three-dimensional realm, forcing the images to be expressed as allegorical symbols. So we're dwelling in a world of mind, and all the animals and all everything else is all aspects of mind allegorically imaged into the physical that we see. 
our bodies are allegorical images of our mind, from the tip of our toes, fingers, to the hair on our head. Every part of it is an allegorical expression of mind, as is the animals, as is nature, as is all that we deal with. So we're actually immersed in an allegory, allegorical, a world of allegorical symbols. Once again, the gospel portrayal of the plight of man is more correct than the Eastern doctrine of reincarnation with respect to failed images. The Eastern teachings state that the soul jumps from body to body to body to body, passing through the cloud of forgetfulness where its memory becomes whitewashed and cleansed, and then it just goes, it always goes like this. It's totally false. Anyone who who actually has traveled into the reality of the soul can see that instantly. All your past lives that your soul has lived is all there within the mansion of the soul. They still exist. Time is a dimension of consciousness. This is only a three-dimensional world. We can't conceive of time in the same way as the reality as higher reality. And this is why also why what we deal with in this world these shadow images are not haphazard, they're allegorical images of mind projected into nature. Because there is no time when a person physically dies, the person who passes over to the other side can become locked into a paradigm of thinking. Your church friends who praise the Lord and worship the Jesus God become locked into this worship and frequent the churches. And in the churches they try to put the, their own thoughts into the minds of the people worshiping and, and praising the Lord as they become disembodied spirits. All the people who are addicted to the ap lower appetites of the body. When they pass out of the body, there is no time. They can become addicted and live out their addiction for just about eternity. Atheists are often seen as just lying comatose above the body or around the body or whatever, same as Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that there is a anything past death, they believe you die and then you got to wait to the end times. And basically they all lie comatose in the uh, graveyards above the body waiting for the end times. This can be seen. You can prove this to yourself by simply developing the ability to go into the astral realms. But since we're not talk, our objective is not to enter astral realms, I'm just telling you what I've seen what we've seen. Everybody lives out their beliefs. Now, the average people who really have no firm beliefs, they're much more susceptible to being helped when they pass over the other side. And then they have to develop, and they have to live out their, they have to, all the things that they failed to do here, they're doing on the other side. They go to school, they learn reality, but it counts for nothing because they not, they're no longer in the physical body. So all those unmanifest soul images, while they advance and they end up being reunited to the soul, there's no gain, real gain, because unless you make the changes while in the body, you get nothing on the output end of it. One other thing, in the astral realms, hell is real. And those who believe or they're going to hell or have lived that kind of life or of that vibration, they go into an astral hell. And all the things that they imagine and everything that, that, that they've been taught can come to pass. 
eternal burning, whatever it is that they're doing, can be a, come a reality. Now, <coughs> many people have picked apart the church because they say, well, if you don't believe, you don't do this and do that, then you're going to hell. A lot of people do go to hell or become stuck in the astral realm. that the, the problem is though that the church has nothing to do with getting you out of these astral realms. In fact, in a lot of instances they cause it because of the limitations of their doctrine. The ones who have no real beliefs or are susceptible to actually seeing what's going on they're usually met by relatives on the other side and they usually help and they usually eventually all the things that they didn't do here they then eventually do on the other side in order to prepare to be reunited to your soul which is the same thing when I first encountered the near-death experiences and I said well why do you have to die to come into the presence of the being of life you don't have to the original teachings of the way was expressly designed to bring you to yourself, your true self. When the Gospel of Thomas states that you have to become yourself, it's talking about that. This is the knowledge, self-knowledge. And while the after-death stages the people go through, does prepare them to re be reunited to their true self. It does not do anything for when they're back in the body in this world and they've still got to develop. Why? Because it's the lower nature that must be developed in order to progress the soul. And when you're no longer in the body, you no longer have access to the lower nature. Which means the idea of you just get rid of one body and jump to another, that's another false doctrine. Turning back to the beginning of what I stated here under the heading of intellectual poverty, it's based upon the rejection of the words of, in the Epistle of James that if this knowledge of the cosmology of mind is lost, that it'll be impossible for those who seek the truth to find it which nobody believes. Or, that if you lack self-knowledge, you dwell in a state of in intellectual and spiritual poverty. Nobody really believes that either. But when you've attempted to build on a gravely flawed paradigm of mind, you become flatlined. And that's what it's talking about. Immersed in error, which is what Plato's case says, this is all shadow in it false realities, which includes our religions and our philosophies, which are based upon cave logic, taken from Plato's cave, our culture, academia and all our educational systems, the vast majority of self-help books and all the rest, which is basically helping you, it, it's good, it makes you feel better, it copes, it helps you deal with life and everything else, but it's not bringing you to that stage of enlightenment. It's not bringing you to that stage of self-knowledge. Who am I? What am I? Where am I going? What am I here for? Answers none of those questions. The whole of our political framework and structure is all based upon counterfeit foundation. The whole foundation of our thinking in this culture is all based upon a counterfeit paradigm of thinking. The vast majority of our science, our healing arts and systems, all based on grave error. Because we're lacking the connection to re our higher self, this true reality, which is what the Gospel of Thomas calls intellectual and spiritual poverty. But nobody believes that, or very few people believe that. Under our heading on this slide, it says we look to the three-dimensional shadow while ignoring the 12-dimensional source. We don't even know that these are allegorical shadow images and that they're only 
allegorical because the reality in the 12 dimensional realm can't be expressed in a three dimensional realm. So all they can give us is a symbolism of what that means that we see. Even our body is an allegorical three dimensional image of a higher 12 dimensional reality in mind. Again, the Delphic Oracle, in light of what I've been talking about. Heed these words, you who wish to probe the depths of nature. If you do not find within yourself that which you seek, either will you find it outside. Yet we keep looking outside. We keep reading books about the outside. Um, what they call, like, knowledge, the Alice Bailey knowledge and all that. It's all talking about external things. This is all just a different kind of scripture. And eventually the person gets to the point where they say, looking outwardly is meaningless, which is exactly what the Delphic Oracle states. If you ignore the wonders of your own house, how do you expect to find other wonders? In you is hidden the treasure of treasure. Know thyself and you will know the universe and the gods. So all sorts of knowledge is within us. Yet we suppress this knowledge. We suppress the way to bring this knowledge. Since the key to a lot of the acquisition of this knowledge is the intuitive, which is the feminine side, we put all our intuitive in the burqa. We ignore what it says. Rick, you, you tried to present this in your seatbelt ticket, right? Yeah. They said, the will of the queen is what counts. <laughs> That's right. It doesn't matter what you do or what you think. Exactly. Ignoring the source causes our soul over the course of an incalculable number of lives to dwell in intellectual and spiritual poverty, making virtually no gains whatsoever. And if you go into spirit, the majority of the souls that you see look like weak, flickering stars. And every so often you come into the presence of one that advanced and you thought you're now present, come into the presence of God. There's no conception in the New Age or anything else of what, what a mature, advanced soul looks like. To them we're just all equal, just all fluttering, just all expressions of God, all nice, everything else. They're about as far from truth and reality as, you, as the Christian church which they abandoned and just adopted new dogma. But as long as you continue to embrace the thinking of this world, which Plato calls shadow images, you will make no progress except at a virtual snail space. What's that slot? in South America that moves ever so slow, you have to watch it over the course of a day, that's the, the progress that the souls make so long as they embrace the thinking of this world. We dwell in a shadow world. All we see and interact with is a three-dimensional allegorical image that remain ignorant of the true meaning. In failing to understand the nature of reality what we see, our conclusions are always an error because we're always looking at the shadow images. This is what the analogy of Plato states. And the gospel is portrayed as the outer darkness of mind and being. Same thing. We blindly sojourn in the roads and byways of this world, never making any real gain, perpetually going around in circles, ever lost and never finding our way. And if we op speak openly, both church and state, and what it represents will move against us. As soon as the gospel, the original gospels were given were written and handed over to the Gentiles, they were corrupted. Because they made them reflect their beliefs that they had. As their beliefs that were alienated them from the truth. And that's also in the epistle of Peter and James. That not to give the most sacred books to the Gentiles because whatever they gave to them was corrupted instantly. And this is true of all religions. Just like our present gov government is trying to corrupt the Constitution. All our governments all our churches, all our institutions, 
are all illegitimate because they're shadow images, incomplete at best. Yet within us, within our own house, we have a source that exceeds anything this world can imagine. The Gospel of Thomas says if we connect to that source, we will be astonished. Who in this world is astonished when they go to church? Who in this world is astonished when they go to school or anywhere? Maybe they're astonished looking at the violence on the TV, but that's about it. Astonished by looking at pornography, I don't know. But nothing in our present day society can explain what these people are saying, right? Or right. In not understanding the true nature of the scriptures and failing to properly apply the key of knowledge, we, we remain lost and confused. Scriptures were written, coded, so that they would be preserved for people like myself, people like you, to decode and understand. Now, if you're going to properly apply the key of knowledge, which is what the scriptures talks about, then ultimately every interpretation of the scripture has to be within you. Nothing external. Neither the people, the lepers, or anything else has to be all turned within you. And if you do that, the corrupted scriptures are almost as good today as they were when they were written. And that's something that when I first became aware of the corruption of the scriptures of this life, I said, what good are they? And I was told they're sufficient if you use them properly. And that's true. But to use them properly, you have to live them. You have to see the scriptures as a pattern of mind which reveals the forces and laws of consciousness. I have a slide here that says we're immersed in abject ignorance. I think I've been saying that all along, actually. We have banned the most important knowledge from our schools, teaching young minds shadow ignorance. The Bible, it could be taught and said, all right, some people interpret it this way, but the original people interpreted it this way. And if they was to do that, then they would what's in the Gospels would be the highest knowledge available in our society today. Because when you look into the Gospels, you're seeing a picture of your own mind. We're not talking about 12 disciples. We're talking about 12 spheres of mind. We're not talking about a man named Jesus. We're talking about that vibration that connects us with the Logos, or the indwelling of God. We're talking about freeing the multitudes from the Pharisees or the false dogma of this world or from the Romans. What you see is a picture of self, your own mind in, this, in the Gospels. That exists nowhere in academia. Nowhere is the pattern laid out like it is in the Gospels if you apply it to yourself. I don't see it. It's... I can see it in Greek mythology. I don't know enough about Eastern religions, their, their sacred writings to apply it, but I know those other words, that was a fraud. But I suspect someone stuck that in there. Here's a, a thought for today for Allison, who has lots of friends in the <laughs> church. The modern church seeks after fool's gold while ignoring the real thing which they reject by embracing cave logic, which is the mindset and lifestyle of this world. So these Christians have this book that can connect them with God, provide them knowledge of self, bring about their own enlightenment, but they send their children off to teach, learn from the people, the nations, or they adopt pagan Roman dogma because they can't even conceive of how to properly interpret the scriptures like the, the original authors said to. 
or the pre nicene church, etc. Thus they seek fool's gold, meanwhile letting the real gold slip right through their fingers. And this causes the, them and everybody else to remain prisoners in Plato's cave of illusion, teaching shadow logic to their children, basing important decisions that they're making in their life on shadow knowledge. Allegorical shadow images of a 12th dimensional reality that's inconceivable to them. Because they've been so alienated from reality that they dwell in thinking that the images of Plato's cave is real, just like Plato wrote. Remember our friend Nama Hebrew who said, Why do you listen to these pagan Greek philosophers? Each one of us has the ability to seek to connect with the source within us that each religion has expressed itself differently is the reality. And that the men of wisdom were always rejected by the vast majority is as true then as it is today. So we attach ourselves to counts for religious and philosophical shadow dogma based upon Lord Cave foundational paradigm of thinking, which is true today. That was the end of my presentation that I worked out, so I'll entertain questions. <laughs> Nobody wants to wants to talk about it? Amos. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Question. I had one, I think. I would find where I wrote it though. Uh, one thing is, if this all this knowledge was lost, and let's face it, I'm getting on in age, and it's up to most of you to develop it further, and you are presently defining your future lives and what you're going to accomplish. Except for you, you're older than me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ignore what I'm saying to the rest of them. We got we got Adam there from South Africa, and Jared is on your shoulders. <laughs> All of Canada. <laughs> a lot of Canada is going disposably in the Casey Earth shifts. Canada, a lot of Canada will continue. I'm not sure about the west end of Canada where you are because that's in that ring of fire. Might want to move off of that too, just like you might want to move out of Japan. <laughs> yeah. Casey's so correct. Keep saying. Huh? Well, we have we have the tsunami that sort of did some damage. We're not quite haven't sunk it yet. That's not exactly what Casey predicted. I know. Uh, they it's told me that eventually I'll move out of New York because eventually New York won't be that. They said when Japan goes, New York will be next. So <laughs> they said watch for Japan. <laughs> but they also said that there'll be great unrest in the cities prior to any of this happening to the degree that people will have to move out of the cities. And I think you're beginning to see that, that right now. Between the unrest that's being promoted between the left and the right and idiots and fools. Well, a question I, well, when I was reading one of the posts you made in preparation for today, you finished with, uh, there was the soul retains all the de 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 developmental attributes gained in any given life. Even attributes. Though attributes even though the individual personality of that life failed to achieve the next stage of birth. That's important because what that means is that whatever you accomplish the soul will retain. It doesn't matter whether you achieve the next stage of birth or whether you're a failed image. Whatever you accomplish will be retained by the soul because you will become 
reconnected and re part of the soul. When you, probably it was easy for myself and Flo to understand this because I've achieved soul birth many times and Flo has achieved it once and when she was able to achieve it, she, she, she became cemented at that level. And this became part of the relationship and everything else. And one of the unique abilities she's always had was the ability to transcend time and manifest past life personalities of the present. Now, according to Ed Casey, many of the people in the psycho wards are actually past life personalities who came into the present. And they just can't relate to our present culture. Or many of the other people are being strongly influenced yeah. by past life personalities. You can see that. And they're sitting there talking in their head and images mm -hmm. and everything else. Well, that's important because that yes, it is very important because you said the the idea that we jump from body to body is is false doctrine. You can essentially haunt or, or trouble yourself in the in a future a future self can be troubled by a past self. Yes, and that's what, something people don't have any realization of. It's very hard to comprehend unless you've experienced. It's so dynamic, isn't it? That's what's yes. hard to get your head around. Well, that's why I call. That's why I call it the soul mind matrix, mm -hmm. where all these thoughts are coming in there, all these experiences, which are being evaluated right now. So a conscious person, then, when they encounter an experience here, most of the time that experience is connected to their past, which is part of observing self and understanding what one sees and understands. I so wanted to, oh, sorry, sorry I, I want to parallel, like when you, when you, the, the tributes given in one life, I wanted to try and create a, like a parallel, or think of a parallel, like if you have a job or something like that, or you do a sport and you get develop certain attributes and, and skills. Attributes. Attributes, sorry. Maybe it's <laughs> English. <laughs> English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. English accent. We're not used to the king's Attributes. English. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start imitating you. Don't let me do that. Uh, and this is America. Yeah, I'll start imitating you in your accent. That'll sound terrible. Uh, <laughs> the, the, so if you say you have a job or you do a sport or something and you, the, the attributes you develop from that, then you take it to another. I'd like I've observed people who've come from one martial art to another martial art. They have some attributes which are in parallel and they continue to develop other aspects of themselves in those other martial arts. Or one job, you might learn some skills and then you go to another job and you, you develop other well, skills. Well, that's take also those taken on. care of by the laws you're born under. Remember, you're one, when you were conceived, you were born at one point in the, what makes up the tree of life, which means that you were born under the influence of one 144,000. But that's going to predicate your view and your understanding of the world for the rest of your life. So what you're doing is you're experiencing from the perspective of that where you were born. Now how much you expand that. And that's why when I go into the segmented mind, it's ultra important because this is also why the gospel, why the gospel account that Jesus says, "Do not judge," because you're only seeing yourself. And part of the process of observing oneself, what Socrates talks about, is taking responsibility for what you see, because most in most instances. What you see is coming from your own consciousness and your own thoughts that you're applying to it. They're only the stimulation. It's reflecting back to you. And this is why the gospel goes into such long thing on no judgment. Forgive, don't become chained by what you see. But since nobody is observing themselves and they don't take responsibility for what they see, they're not growing, they're not expanding. They're trying to hand over responsibility to other people, yes. the governments and other things, and expand yes. the things that keep them from... Look at Obama, he's an artist at that. He's never taken responsibility for anything. Well, neither is the left, neither is the right, neither is most people. It's always them. 
part of observing self, coming to the knowledge of self, is taking responsibility for what you see and what you feel when, when, in, when in the presence of other people. Because that's, that's what you see is being predicated by those past lives. And you can at that time capture part of self and you can open that door of communication and you can bring about the expansion of mind. This is Esotericism 101. Taking responsibility for what you see. Nobody does it. It's always them, this, that. This is what the Delphic Oracle is talking about. About the wonders of one's own house. And what if it exists externally? What the holographic image says is that everything is replicated. Reality is replicated within yourself. Now, if this is true, then I can take and I can write about anything in the world, and that can be applied within your own consciousness. And this is how the scriptural, or this is how the authors of scriptures create their writings. He's, like Origen said about the key of knowledge, what are these marriages and wars and everything else? But they're talking about inner realities of mind and being. And this is true. Jesus is not out there. Jesus is not in the past. He's within you. But he's a distant voice because you have to have the coming together of the 12 disciples in order to get to that, what Jesus represents. And then you have to free the multitudes within you from the false dogma of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Romans. This is all what the Gospels mean, what's being applied. This will give you self-knowledge. The self-knowledge will give you help you tap into the inner source within you. I can't teach you this. It can't be written in books. You have to do it yourself. And since the only objective is to become yourself, it shouldn't be all that hard. <laughs> if you're the ego self or the lower self, and you have an inner self that's your true self, all you have to do is start listening to that inner voice and developing it, and perfecting it your communications with it. And remember that whatever you see in the world, before you make judgments, it's important to discern and take responsibility for what you see. Because if that image and something's reflected back to you is when you can communicate across the inner soul mind matrix and expand your own consciousness. What was your question, Beth? <laughs> My question was, Actually, before I ask the question, do you think this level of speaking will be picked up or should we be repeating? No, it's, it's fine. No, it's, it's good. good. You it's said good. the mic was good. Okay. Yeah. So I'm thinking about accomplishments. You said, you know, the accomplishments are what you take back to your soul. What, can we define that some? Like what an accomplishment is? Is it, as I came into this life, I was Gaining supposed knowledge to... knowledge of living it? Just period, or is it specific? Like I was supposed to accomplish A, and if I accomplish A in my lifetime in my body, then that's what goes back to my soul. Or if I just well, accomplish everything, anything. goes back to your soul. But you see, in the alpha of creation, the laws were instituted that drives all of creation to the omega, and it's going to drive you to the omega, kicking and screaming. Right. That's what Flo always well, says. So it's, it's whether I do it's it a, in it's a, gar or not. it's a guarantee. Like that, like that statement in Isaiah that my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And as the word of God proceeds, it will not return to me void. Right. But exactly what it was supposed to do. Right. Now in the beginning of creation, the law was put into effect that all creation has to go from this alpha of ignorance to the emotion, into the omega of enlightened life. Based upon a very specific plan and yes, it's all it's all related, it's all controlled do. by law. Yeah. Now, how long you want to play with the laws, and how long you want to impose right. suffering upon yourself, 
What does Jesus say about the eye of darkness? There's the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. How long you want to weep and gnash your teeth? It's up to you. Yeah. Personally, I don't gnash my teeth to weep at all. I'm perfectly happy. My preference would be not to, but I have a feeling that's not the way it's going. <laughs> So well, you got your father with you right now, right? I do. He's with me all the time. All right. He's, you, you, he talks to you in spirit. He does. And he's helping you and he's guiding you. He's glad you moved to North Carolina, right? <laughs> now you need his good job and whatnot. <laughs> so, Flo, that's what, what we've been talking before. And you kind of say, you're, it's gonna, your soul's going to put you back on track. So you've got to do ABC. So if you don't do ABC in this life, you're going to live in a world after this life where you're trapped there until you do ABC. And then when you do ABC, you get to go back to your soul, but it doesn't count if you didn't do it while you're in your body. So that Why doesn't it count? Because you have to apply it to the lower nature. Yeah, which is only in this third dimension. Right, world. once you're out of the body, you don't have the lower nature anymore. Right. So then that means someone else is going to have to do it because B has to be done. Right. Think at, of this, at though. At a certain level. Well, okay. I, no, I well, want you to speak on that at a certain level. Right. There are, you know, like animal people that, you know, it's held to skeleton. Can you talk on that? I don't know if that is uh, at a certain level. Well, most there people is are, A, B, and C. Most people are not even and what they call <laughs> the kingdom of man. Right. That they're being totally controlled by their lower animal nature. Well, now, our society that. doesn't even know that man has a lower nature, mm -hmm. or that there's an animal that in, that makes up his lower nature, and they do everything in their culture that enforces and brings out the lower nature, the animal nature. So they're driven by their animal nature. Right. Means it's impossible for them to understand a word I say. I think that a lot of people coin it as human nature. They think that animalistic part is human nature. Well, don't forget, St. Francis was human, too. Right. So, you know, man is capable of being a saint. Well, we're all capable of being a killer or a saint just like that, aren't we? Yes, we are. I think that's what is hard to understand sometimes. You think so when you say human God. nature, human nature can be divine. Or it can be like be, Hitler. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, they say human nature, just like they say we're all conscious. Right. It's just become a buzzword, right? Oh, so when I like I teach the kids, they, you know, they, they uh, in school, they're taught it's, um, they're up the animal kingdom. Mm -hmm. so, no, you're not. <laughs> well, when I was a kid, they taught us that uh, exactly. they, they had a thing called man, a course of study, and they used to show eight to eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's absolutely true. They should you be used this at school. <laughs> all these systems, occult knowledge, all have been are composed and authored by awakened souls who have merely tried to form the allegory of the outside to be meaningful to be turned within. Like Alice Bailey, nothing but different type of scripture. Now they said that the original gospels were corrupted and it wasn't in tune with our thinking so they create this other type of gospel. I don't think it's near as good. Then again, I'm kind of biased to the one side. <laughs> but all these teachings are all a different type of scripture because they're all an allegory. Nature is speaking to us. What does the uh, Essene Gospel of Peace say? If you want to hear the Word of God, look into nature. It's speaking to you. God didn't write dead books, meaning the Torah. God wrote nature. This also is what the Deist said, but they're as lost as can be today. If you look at the outer world, Paul said the same thing. <laughs> um, is there an element of our real self, you know, our, our soul, or some element of that, that's not an allegory that eventually lives in this third dimension? When you make your body, 
to support that higher reality. Because right. you're only, you're, you're the seed cast into the body in the parable of sowing the seed. So when you expand that seed to the point where a 12 dimensional being can inhabit, then your soul can manifest in the body. Exactly. And that's what soul birth is about. Right. Or in the case of the historical man Jesus, when you go beyond that, and you take your soul beyond that, in the conversation with my soul self when I was young, I used to tell him, so ultimately I'm your savior, because I got to deal with all the nonsense that you left and dumped on yeah. me. Exactly. And this is a good, this is probably egotistical. A <laughs> little bit. But my soul has a really big ego. And I find that ego subsides when you plug your ego into your higher ego. Ultimately God, God has a big ego too. The idea that you're going to suppress the ego, that's nonsense. That's like taking away the dirt that you're throwing the seed into. You got to develop the ego. So I used to, I, I teased my, we called my higher soul self, smart ass, because he always came up with smart ass answers <laughs> to my questions. And um, so I told him, so really, you gotta be nice to me because I'm your savior. <laughs> I'm getting you out of all the trouble that you got into before me. <laughs> Which is true. He's referring to his like boss. Boss. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, the code word. You're so, <laughs> when you become your one with your soul, your, yeah. soul <laughs> your higher soul self can't progress so long as you and your higher soul self are divided. Yeah. Spiritual development cannot take place until you have achieved that next stage of birth. And along with you, and through your manifestation, you will then advance your soul. And all the images. And all the images along with it. And when the Bible says that Jesus went to hell, he's talking about the hell that these images were in. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the going to the outside world hell. Yeah. Or the salvation for, the, for the, those who don't follow in his footsteps. And all the images that were stuck in these places, he brought all together with himself and advanced. And this is what you have to do. But even the even the more advanced souls, all our political leaders and a lot of our religious leaders are somewhat advanced souls. But even those are little winky lights in spirit. Because it's not until they achieve that next stage of soul birth that you can really advance yourself spiritually. And then you become the savior of your soul. Because without you, your soul can't advance. It's so strange, like, I get, when you're saying that, I get it, like I can just feel it's right, but then my mind starts That's the logic, brain, trying to fight like, against the intuitive. Always says, this is all a lot of malarkey. Yeah. I can feel like I'm going, yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait, how can all this exist? And so it's it's hard to kind of fight those conflicts sometimes and just go with what you really feel. Because there's the brain and then there's the mind, and they're different, right? Well, and then there's different personalities that kick in that try also to the, the play conflict with you a bit. between how much when you're dealing with this external, the allegories and dealing with all of these people that are predominantly driven by their lower natures, how much when you're having struggles through dealing with institutions that want to suppress you down, like you know governments that are your biggest threat to security, hospitals that are your biggest threat to health, churches all that are your are biggest illegitimate. threat to spirit, yeah. how much do you fight against those laws that are keeping them down or how much do you fight with them in order to try and raise yourself up? Yeah. Also, basically, I wrote the last blog article on gay marriage. I said, well, they might as well just join the illegitimate marriages. Because all marriages are illegitimate, unless they're based upon reality. Yeah. Since we don't even understand reality, how can we have marriages based upon reality? This is true of all governments, all, all the institutions of this world. Yeah. Reality is what connects this world with the inner reality, with the source. This three-dimensional 
with the 12 dimensional source. This is what modern physics has begun to say, but they don't know how to get that. And I don't think it's going to help them getting out the Braga Vedas either. <laughs> I don't think that's as good portrayal of mind and being as it is the Gospels. But as long as the Christians keep reading it like a history book, doing fool's gold instead of the real thing, yeah. they'll, they'll stay lost. Other questions? Yeah. Sean, you're going to have to take over me when I pass in this life, you know. I don't know about that. <laughs> the, okay, so the, the concept, this is, it's just a concept. So everything's happening right now, right? Like everything. Well, true, but not. There's a little more to it than that. All right, fair enough. Okay. You can't say it's all happening at once. On one side of the paradox it does, and on another side of the paradox it is. So, all right, well, here, here's what I'm thinking. You understand what the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge is, right? That's when you take one side over the other side without bringing them together and raising them up. So if to say that it's all happening at once, well, that's not exactly true. There's the other side that says it's not. Right, so I'm with you there. I mean, so there's... So here's a, what, I mean, just, I know it's maybe difficult to portray, but like, here's, here's a life, it's maybe, I, I like to think of it almost like computer terms, it's just the way I think sometimes, but. Sometimes computers, you got to realize my background is computers also. So, like, I would think it was like, here's a program running, and maybe I got another one running, they're all running at the same time, but they're all running independently. It's all zeros and ones. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, at some point, there's going to be, uh, we've seen this concept of soul birth, which means on some level it's already happened. Like it's already out there. It's just, it hasn't happened for this portion of it, I guess. So that, what I'm saying, does that make any sense at all or about twisted all around? That's, that's, what I'm, that's my question. One of my fears with time, and I'll share this one with you, is that you keep living your past lives until you get it right. Like Groundhog Day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My keyboards. <laughs> Think of that one. Okay, I'm with you now. Now I've thought about it that way before too, where it's just there yeah, must be there must yeah. be a valid reality to yeah. the frightening sequence. <clears throat> yeah. It, <laughs> Because if you, would, if, you, if you think of it in computer terms, it'd almost be like, here's version one. I told that to Flo two, the other day, and so she about died. Yeah. <clears throat> what did I get that? you keep living it over until you get it right. The same well, way. There's a verse that goes, they, they without us shall not be made perfect. Mm -hmm. And we can take that backwards and forwards, though. Well, that's also the problem. You can, uh, we've looked at our future lives. Yeah. And... How's it looking? The world is not very populated. And that's another fallacy that the Eastern religions has a uh, thing that when they say the soul jumps from body to body without anything, without understanding the, the soul that the person is an image, they also immediately open themselves up for the intellectual argument, well, how come the world's population expands? person goes from body to body and this is it, then where do all these people come from? So right off an intellectual person will reject the whole doctrine. Um, there are a great multitude of souls who have not even at any time incarnated into this world and are still waiting their time. They're happy being these little flashing lights. Eventually, same parallel on it, and people are happy just not progressing as they are, and enjoying the life as the same parallel. Well, they look at this world as madness. Why should I become immersed in this madness? <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that. I can see what they're saying. <laughs> I, I, I always say this world's strange. Yeah. It's just weird, like everything about it. I can relate to that, no problem. <laughs> but. As these souls who are presently evolving at a much more rapid rate move out, 
those same laws that guarantee that going to perfect from the alpha to the omega will entrap them and pull them into it. And they'll have no choice. And they will be drawn into it and they will be forced into evolution because as, the, as it says in Isaiah, my word that I speak will not return to me void, but will perform exactly what I intended. And since all the creation will eventually move towards the omega of perfection, those who have not even begun will be entrapped in it, the same way as we were entrapped at one time. But ultimately, I'll oh, start going ahead, Sean. Oh, no. Well, ultimately. I just, but on the, on the start, okay, like you're talking about the omega, yeah. and then you're talking about the end. Um, where is the zenith in this? What defines zenith? Here, and then we're going back to zero? Or, mm. or, or are I would say actually, once you hit the omega that you were there, because time does not exist, and it's all exists within you. Right, but do we go back to nothing again. No. I see, like you kind of start here almost like a clock. You start here, you sleep to the world, no. and then you go back up. Right. Is that what you're thinking? I would yeah. say no, that you stay in that state of perfection. It's like your soul does not enter into the body and become less. Your soul retains all that it was, all that it has ever been. Right. So does God. God mm -hmm. retains all the experiences of all of life, of all of creation. Does not go backwards. Can't go backwards. Okay, but this here then is when it, when it's on the downswing. Well, what's you, on the downswing? Explain downswing. Uh, negative energy. So the way negative is on the other side the of way positive, or the back wave. Negative is the other side of positive. You right. mean those souls who have never incarnated? They're waiting that time. Right. It's like going into a movie theater. Those who are on the outside haven't got into the theater yet. Well, the world only has so many bodies. Only so many people can be in here at one time. Right. Where the souls are vast and almost innumerable. And that's many souls have not even into, entered into this type of life and this type of advancement. Eventually, the void will be created. As these souls move out and no longer incarnate, those souls will be drawn in. Right. But the on the theory of there's a movie called Multiplicity, and I don't know if you've watched it, it's but the one guy creates another guy off of him. Then another one, one to take care of business, one to take care of pleasure by cooking or whatever. These two guys decide to get together and create a thirst. So this is what I'm trying to bring into this is on the downswing then, are we creating an image that goes into the lower realms. Oh, Does like that we spin off a parallel life right. by a choice well, we make. Or like, I mean, yeah, but all it, things it's have not to... everything. We didn't experience it all. In, in other words, from the alpha to the omega, we didn't experience it all. Do we create a, a part? The idea we is saying from the soul perspective. Well, soul, if the soul makes many images and comes into life. Okay. You don't. You're just the image false image of your soul, the lower image of your soul, right. you don't, you're not the one calling the shots. No, I understand that. But what if I'm you saying, open the door to a lower expression, then your soul will have to enter into those lower expressions because ultimately we are our soul. Right. But ultimately, if we took the soul and expressed it in our body, this would be who we are. It's only the body limitations that inhibit the soul from being the soul. Because we don't have the dimensions of the depth and the, and the expanse of self, our soul can't come into our life and manifest. Okay. Ultimately, we are our soul. That's expressed in the present time and the present conditions. So if we open the door to some lower condition, then the soul is going to have to go and retrieve that or deal with it in a future life. Homosexuality. So they open the door to homosexuality. People are born homosexual because they open those doors. Right. And now they'll continue to be born homosexual, whatever, until they deal with it. Okay. Or everything else. 
What is it? What is it? A post the other day where it says that there's still husbands and wives fighting with each other, still doing this, still doing that. It goes on until they resolve their issues. Now, whatever door you, as a, as your present soul image, would have opened, your soul will have to deal with it in the future. Right. All the thoughts, desires, words, and deeds, everything that we put out there goes into a circle and it comes back somewhere. Well, first of all, it originated from your past and your soul. Right, but we're a part of someone that has gone on before us. Isn't this what Jesus talked about when he talked about the prison? Right. And that people put themselves in the prison through their judgments and their actions and everything else? And they can't get out of the prison until they paid, repaid the last farthing? Right. Okay. But in the same way that Yeshua attain perfection, can then he create as a soul does an image into this world? Not without the provision and the environment being made that would manifest such a soul. Because he's basically at one with his soul self is also one with God. Right. And then part of that inheritance, creatorship, inheritance, can he not then create? Why would it? To attain some uh, experiential knowledge that he hasn't or he's they have. He's God. Have. He's at one with God. What experiential knowledge is he lacking? Well, then why are we here? You are not at that level yet. No, I'm not saying that we are, but we're experiencing knowledge. You're, well, you're as, growing as your soul. There's everybody, every, everything is subject to change. But you're growing your soul in this life. Right. This is God's schoolhouse. Right. You're a developing soul, so you're developing. If you finish school, do you go back to school just for the fun of it? Not for the fun of it, but you still continue to learn. Who says? If you want to grow. Well, perhaps the then perfection is when you've reached that total experience of learning and being. But you're, then, you're saying you get bored, huh? Yeah, and there'd be a finite point. <laughs> is God there a stopping was, point? What? Saying God was bored. God wanted to go back to school. God is. No, no. I don't mean it that way. That's all right. Get it up. You're, you're gonna... It's not that you're bored, or there. To me, it's not that there's always a never-ending thirst for knowledge, but there's something there. The Gospel of Thomas says that after that stage of being amazed, you'll find rest. It means that you've accomplished all there is to accomplish. And that you're, you are your essence of being, and that these illusions that we play with, they're nothing, they're toys, if learning you, experiences. If you want to use a, that analogy of going to go to a, a college or whatever and you complete a course that has certain steps, and once you've completed all that, you move on to the next stage, which is a job in that whatever you've completed, and then you complete that, maybe become a CEO or whatever by the time you retire or the highest level of manager and you've completed that. And that's but you don't need to you don't But that's that's within the point so presuming there's a beginning and then there's an end, right? So that's within that whatever that is. I think correct if I'm wrong, I think what you're asking is about at that end, like kinda of like basically like then what, right? Also when you get to be a one with God you get to be at one with everybody else, but you're connecting with everybody else and you're experiencing their experience. Yeah, well, I don't know how to explain it though. After all, God is evolving through us. It's like there's there's more to it. God's consciousness is expanding through all of right, the right, right. consciousness. Right. So there is not a finite. Right, right. right. That, well, that's right. what I'm trying to So when you become one with God, you're still kind of you're right, because, because if you look at nature and you look at the way the world has evolved. What is nature? Evolved. It's illusions. And allegory. Well, nature is allegory. Like, like a horse. 
So <laughs> you, you look, at, you look at evolution of a horse, right? So, it's a long time ago, they had, they had tiny horses, right, on the fossil record? And then you look nowadays, they're still horses, they're just different, right? Nothing's really changed, they're just well, different like types of horses. Horses that are this tall, too. Yeah, or grass. I, mean, I want to ride on the grass. unicorn. <laughs> Now that sounds like fun. <laughs> if you want to do a past image, right? They can unicorn. fly, can't they? <laughs> and what, what, what I'm getting at, I guess, basically, is like in this world, everything has either a sad ending or a or a happy ending or a good ending or all this kind of stuff. And it's always an ending in this illusion. How about a conscious ending? Yeah, it's the, that's the difference. A what? Well, it's a conscious ending. It's all about conscious fulfillment. So once see you things as they really are. To understand things as they really are. Yes, you know, but recognize do you ever what is in your really sight. Understand everything. Hmm? Do you really understand everything? Your soul sees everything as it really is. No, I understand that part. And God sees and knows all things. And those who are at one with God see and know all things. You know, you said you'd like to experience everything. God. Well, what so are these things? We come at a at a point when you're one with the Logos or God, that you are experiencing everything. At, there's no you one by one anymore. You are experiencing everything all. It's just you don't need a whole body in order to. Yeah, but then there's a sensory overload and you just go. You know. I'm having a hard time imagining God. That was just so much. Are you getting anything out of this conversation? How are you, Jerry? Fragments. Right, right. No, I understand. Are you getting a one out of this conversation? Once you overcome the fragments, you don't need to then divide because you essentially you develop the capability of avoiding sensory overload. Yes, but I will never uh, encounter something like uh, Manson or something like that. How do you know you don't have Manson in your past? Well, I do, but I mean, I'm not saying I'm not. I'm just saying him per se. And no, no doubt, the Manton is also an expression of God. Right. So those who are one with God have also. Well, wait. That's what it says about the judging. When you, when you drop the judging, you understand the one, because that's. There's what a difference. Leads. That's the difference between judging and discernment. Discernment right. is, is, what do I call it? Not that I call empathetic. Well, I Charlie empathetic. Man. Right. Understand <laughs> by experiencing through that other person, and also revealing oneself, what you feel about it, taking responsibility. For I guess feelings. basically what I'm saying is I don't see an end in the Omega. Well, you haven't gotten there yet. Tony, you? you're talking because it's you that don't see it. No, no, no. Imagine God. The what? God. You're, and you're you're talking about. Seeing it in the, the point of view of God, can you do that? Yeah, you mean seeing from God's point. From God's you want to tell us God's, God's perspective? Yeah. No, no, I, yeah. You want to tell us? You want, we'll all listen to you if you want to tell us God's perspective. <laughs> I, I get what you're saying, Tony. It's hard to imagine, for me, it's hard to imagine a true beginning and a true end. It just seems like things are always in motion in a cycle. But then, as you were talking, I tried to fill into it, and what I felt was, have you ever had that experience where you wake up on a given day, and everything is just everything you wanted, and you actually don't have a desire. You're just sitting there in full appreciation. You of, see and perceive and understand all things that they truly are. Right. It kind not of feels the, like God's like not that. The, like, not from the perspective of the illusion. Right. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing to do at this moment. This very moment, it's everything's perfect. been done, and it's perfect, right. and it's yeah. complete and total divine stillness. Rest. I, I, yeah, I, I think that it's something like that. I'm not saying what's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's what it feels like, that that's the that that is the completion, but then my mind starts working, I'm like, it can't be over, there must be something else to do, there must be so. it can't actually stop. It's the ultimate paradox, isn't it? Because yeah. everything is continually moving and going, yet there is continually com completing perfect at the same time. Yeah. It's like, wow. 
it's very hard to get your head around. It can't. Now, if you want to tell us about the perception of God, if you want to tell us about the perception of God, seeing through the eyes of God, we'll, we'll listen. That what? We'll listen to you. Oh, no, I don't want to go there. If you have this insight into I don't want to go into any of that. You know, I, know. I was just trying to throw something out there. And yeah. And mm-hmm. to get people to see a different side of the paradox. It's a good discussion. But you understand how the dogma that you, the soul jumps from body to body actually discredits any intellectual will throw a monkey wrench into that and say, well, how did the world's population get to be so big? No, no, yeah, I get, I get that part. So there's so, many, there's so many instances where they're proven wrong. It's just like the church with their Jesus God when they're proven wrong. But they don't, they're not looking for truth, they're not looking for this higher reality. Well, that's what I always, because the they always say you're going to heaven, so I said, well, what I'm actually going to be doing is sitting in a swing, sipping ice cold lemonade, that's all I'm going to be doing. Isn't everybody here already in heaven? Yeah, it is. Yeah, so. That's the plan. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> That's their version of it. So I thought being married to Mary was heaven. It is. It's also hell. Right, Mary? Yeah. <laughs> I freely admit that. And, and that's what I've told everybody is that when she's right and I'm wrong, it's hell. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I admit it. <laughs> it's hell for you, but it's heaven for Mary. So yeah. It's okay, so, <laughs> so, Alan. When we talk about soul images that didn't accomplish ABC. But whatever they, they did do is retained by the soul. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. And then after this life, they're kind of stuck somewhere in a place they've created. Well, you know, they're held, they're they can be. They, they, and they, in the same way that you have to become your true self, when they pass in this life, they still have the same objective. They have to return to their source. Uh, everyone's going to mm-hmm. do Now, because that, right? there is no time, they can get sidelined forever. Right. Oh, it seems like forever. Right. So is it... And they get stuck in their dogma. Right. And they're thinking. Right. So and you can't, you can't disturb these people. No. Like if you, if you went to where they are praising the Lord and everything else, <laughs> and you tried to say, you know, this wake up or whatever, that doesn't say, get away from me, you evil spirit. That doesn't happen in here and now either. Yes, it does. But I'm talking about right now on the other side. Because there is no time. But when when on the other side, when there is no time, they can stay locked into a single thought forever. Forever. Just as how they This is how there's eternal hell. No, but I met people like that in this life too. I imagine Hugh Hefner is going to go into a perpetual orgy. And then he's going to go. I mean, the man had a beautiful wife, and then they invented Viagra, and he he abandoned them. So the, I'm going to come back to my question. Oh, well, so, 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 so the track, yeah, I, I'll start thinking about half an hour, I'm like, no, I'm coming back to my question. Um, so the trapped souls, you know, they're trapped in this, whatever they've imagined. You mean the atheist who yeah. believes, yeah. because he's of the belief that there's nothing beyond death. Right. He experiences nothing beyond right. death, and he just lays there. In a comatose state, can't be awakened, right. can't be dealt with. But but we can help, meaning if we pray or well, whatever. Prayer always helps, or if you can send light, images, especially fa- close people. Right. But that there's no guarantees that you're no. going to. Because it might not be their destiny to be released, but just like we pray or send light for people that we see right here in this room. But you see, the within the soul can, image, within oh. the soul image, within the soul mind matrix, mm-hmm. and they talk about hell. We're also talking about those images that have been cast into hell. Right. We're also talking about those soul images. We met my brother. I'll tell him that one. When my brother was back in, I don't know, first, second, third century times, they, the Romans used to crucify people all the time. And my brother was threw a rock at somebody being crucified. Do you know he's still got that person's soul image still following around today? Wow. 
and sometimes in the middle of the night you'll see eyes looking at him. And this is this this is this the soul image of the person he was throwing rocks at him, being crucified, and stuck on him and haunting him forever. So it's kind of like an energy cord in a way, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's all those strings that are attached that you don't think you create. There was a string attached to that rock. That's right. And that string's attached to the person that threw the rock and the rock and the person that got hit by the rock. So he came to us and he said, I see these eyes sometimes in the middle of the night when I wake up and whatnot. What are they? This is the image of this soul or this image that he, this person's image that he threw rocks at. And being that feels and that really heavy. Struggle. I mean, and I he's can locked feel in, it And he's locked about. into that thought. Cool. And he's yet to awaken from that thought back in that time. The, uh, that uh, lady wrote about it hospitalized in Egypt as a, as a pharaoh. Grant. Yeah. She was, she, and one of them was she, there was, the people were reporting this, this evil spirit in some old building somewhere. So she went there. And she found some spirit of someone who'd been involved in, who'd been a priest or someone who'd done horrible things and was trapped in this perpetual misery and went and talked to the spirit and, and, and got it to forgive itself and free up or something like that. But it was trapped in that thought and it was just haunting that area and people were too scared to During Atlantis, the priests sometimes protected them by um, attaching the departed to these things as protective and power is still attached to them. There are so there are images who pass over and because there is because they're they're locked into a thought, they remain there forever. Mm -hmm. But within the soul mind matrix, they serve a purpose. We experience hell because as that soul image, the soul was locked into it. And that one's still burning. So when we laugh at the church's dogma, there's truth to it too. Just not the whole truth. This is the bottom. There's reincarnation, but it's not exactly like they think it. We go to glory, but that's not exactly as they think it either. Because in this three-dimensional realm, we can't imagine or envision higher reality. If we, since time is not is only a dimension of mind, if one of our Salt images uh, overcomes and experience the second and the next birth. Does that? How does that affect the other images? Does it? Do they get some kind of freedom from their existence? Or I'm not sure it can so much affect the past until you finish the completion cycle. Because remember, when you experience the next stage of birth, that's only becoming your true self. Now you yet have the objective of seeking to become one with God. So once someone has become one with God, or the head of it, Well, then you can probably free those images up. Because after all, you're God. At least to those images. I say go, soul images, go, come get me. <laughs> Since you talk about past and future, so the choices I make now affect all my future images. That's correct. And say it simultaneously. But the choices you are confronted with now have been predicated by your past images. Right. That's all the strength. So simultaneously you really. exist in, I guess, in multiple you were born with, where you, you, were you born with DNA. multiple choices. You would be born with physical DNA that's, that's controlling your life at present. Yeah, there's like all these inputs from past life. You're actively making some decision or action, and at that very minute, it spins off some sequence for a future life. And it's just this constant, fluid thing. Most people get happening. lost in loops, karmic loops, and they never progress. So I was thinking that because there are you know, multiple realities, all the choices you made, but all those realities is, exist simultaneously, that means all these multiple and infinite realities exist for all your future selves too. To some degree. It gets really confusing out yeah. there, doesn't it? <laughs> Very well, this is part of being amazed. <laughs> yeah, I'm amazed every day. <laughs> so, uh, if I pray and say, 
I pray that my soul be made perfect now in this current day time. If, As, you, if you want now? Say, say I pray. Say, I pray that my soul be made perfect now in this current Prayer does time. not work without action. Sorry? Prayer does not work without, without action. action. Yeah, I understand. The secret to prayer mm. is to pray like it's up to God and act like it's up to you. I understand. All right. So yeah. if you, it's good to pray, but then you have to follow through with the, yes. uh, what, you, what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know that's great. Yeah. It's but one thing to pray to be perfect, but unless you're willing to walk that path, exactly. it ain't going to come to pass. Yeah. yeah. Now my question, I, and I, or that I continue and say for my question, <laughs> I pray that my soul be made perfect, now in this kind of time, as the Holy Spirit of me, Father, is perfect, is that fair? Whole and complete. Good. Let's go to the second one. That's my idea of perfection. <laughs> All right. And then I say, I pray that my body, this physical body, be made perfect, as the earthly mother's body, or Holy Spirit, or my, my Holy the spiritual mother's body is perfect. That's achievable. Who's perfect? The earthly mother. The earthly mother. Let's start with the earthly mother. I pray that my physical body be made perfect as the earthly mother's body is perfect. It's like acknowledging the completeness right. of the earthly <laughs> mother. Yeah, that's this, right. that's this element, that's the feminine right. element yeah. of the earthly. Mm. Is that fair enough? Everything is perfect because everything is designed by the laws and controlled by the laws. Right. It's driving you to completion and wholeness. Yes. Yeah. All right, now say I, 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 I go through screaming that. sometimes. <laughs> I say I go through the process of achieving that. Does that mean that therefore for my high school self, for this soul, we have reached your omega for the completion for the type of time frame on earth? You haven't reached the Omega yet. No, not that you got Omega, but it's more like <laughs> It's like your mission or your the objective mission, but that, this that, that, life. That's right, in this physical yeah. body, in this one, at that time. You entered into this life with certain objectives. Mm. And probably wasn't to achieve soul birth because that's very rare. Mm -hmm. But the laws are, how are confronting you when you're, you're trying to fill those objectives. Right. Now, in the future, your soul will generate other images to work off of what you accomplish in this life. Mm -hmm. And whether you feel you, how well you feel your objectives right. will open the door for you in the future. Yeah. And it's just as important that we achieve little objectives, whether it's soul birth or not. I mean, yes. that's all needed. I think that's what sometimes gets lost in it is mm. we all want soul birth and we want right. to do it, but in the end, it's a rare event. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen to everybody, so relax. Yeah. Every soul is going to get there. <laughs> but maybe having appreciation and embracing mm -hmm. our mission in this life right. with true joy. Mm -hmm. You know, like, mm -hmm. I want to do that piece. Yeah. I think that's what's humbling sometimes, yeah. you know. But yeah. maybe that's where the beauty is, is to really embrace, right. even if it's just this one little thing mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do, mm -hmm. if I can do it and take it back and do it well, right. I'm essentially enabling. Yeah. yeah. But we all want to be the one that does it, right? Like, I want to be the one going through the door. Well, you are your only limitation. Mm. So you got to get rid of those limitations. Right. But you said you only have to overcome the laws you were born under in this lifetime. Nothing to stop you from going beyond that, though. Yeah. For extra credit. For extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> get points with God. I love extra credit. <laughs>